Hey guys, check me out. Don't I look intelligent with these glasses on? Well, hey, guess what? Joke's on you, because I'm not. Anyway, I want to show you this. This is the Hobo Junk Pile. Um, it's looking better. Um, and I'm at a point right now where I'm mocking up the marking. I didn't say marking. I said mocking. Uh, and I don't want people from New York or New Jersey to get confused. Mocking is when you use like some kind of prop. Marking is when you take a pen and mock something, I guess. So anyway, I have uh, the matchbook sized and digitized and I'm going to put those on. But guess what? This neck is a mess. When I got this thing, the action on it was about this big, this tall. You can barely fit your fingers on there. So, I'm going to have to correct the action on this. Now, I don't think this thing is worth a $300 neck set. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit in a little bit of, in an episode called Dummy's Guide to Junk Arch Tops. I'm going to go through when you buy these things. One of the things that happens is these necks cut loose. And when they do, and you see a separation right here, that means the neck is popping up. And the strings get the string action gets really high. This thing had a bridge on it that was basically non-existent, as thick as a razor blade, and the strings were a little bit up off the deck. But when you put a regular set of strings on it and a bridge, the next thing you know they're this high. I can only do so much with this, and I'm not going to pay somebody to do a $300 neck set, which basically you pull off the fret. That's the next one down here, which is about the 15th fret. You pop this fret out, you wait for that car to drive by, you drill a hole and then you put inject steam down in there with a cappuccino maker that you bought at a yard sale. And then you slowly but surely heat this up and it, the hide glue, this is hide glue so it reacts, they did hide, uh, they used hide glue. I said hide glue 14 times there. Anyway, it heats up, it cuts loose and then you pop the neck up and then you shim it back down by uh, carving something off here or sticking a piece of plate in there or something but we're not going to spend three hundred dollars on this we're going to spend three dollars on this and I am going to show you how to do that okay the first thing you're going to need is a rag a rag next thing you're going to need is a piece of sash cord sash cord some of you don't know what sash cord is you used to have these things in the windows where you would slide the windows up and down in old houses and how they worked was there was a piece of rope that went onto the window and up through a pulley and there was a weight there well the cord would pop loose and the weight would crash down so you'd be in the middle of the night and one of the cords would snap and the weight would break and you thought your great-great-grandfather was coming to tell you that you're kind of messing up in life. But anyway, it was a sash cord breaking. So that's what sash cord is. I'm glad I got to tell you uh, some more critical information that when you win on Jeopardy, you are going to give me the money. I'm a plethora of information here. Anyway, next thing, you're going to need one of these motorcycle tie-downs. And then finally, you're going to need a piece of wood. So one more time, rag sash cord, motorcycle tie-down strap, and a piece of wood. This is an old neck cut off. Now, let's get to the stove. Yeah, we're going to do this on the stove. Note to self, let the fire department know they probably had a park right up front. Anyway, let's... All right, all comedy aside, I want to stop at the bench here for a minute and talk about this part of the guitar and and speak to a little bit more detail about what I was telling you about a neck reset but we broke one of the cardinal rules here this fine musical instrument is actually sitting on bare wood and this headstock this wonderful headstock is going to get messed up so you always want to make sure you pat it and I got this this cotton I'm gonna put right there look at that that solved all the problems where did I get that cotton from the cotton get in place no, from my front porch. I grew it on the front porch. And I'm going to give you a link right now to a song about front porch. Front porch trained from Reverend Peyton. you got to have this one. Anyway, back to this. Okay, first off, we're going to stand this up a little bit. 
right here. We're going to pay close attention to where their cotton is placed up there. But if you see right there, that neck is cut loose. Now, did I do a matchbook of the episode yet? Well, that's pretty easy to remedy. Let's do um, the log in. Rock Springs, Wyoming. The log in. Tonight, log in. Doesn't that sound promising? All right, I want you to look right here. Notice that there's no strings on this guitar, but I can take my tonight log in and log that in right there. And look, it slips in just like that. Now, do you remember having points on your car where you would fold a matchbook in half like this, like so, and then you would take the fan belt and turn it, and then you would do a matchbook folded in half and set the gap on your points when the points went around. And inside your distributor cap, you people don't know nothing what I'm talking about except you old men, and, and then half of you can't remember. Anyway, the point here is I put this on here. I string this up and start pulling the strings. This is going to open up. When it opens up, the strings go up. So bottom line, this cannot be this way. Now, you remember me telling you about hide glue? You remember me telling you about fine line applicator with hide glue in it? They used hide glue on these things because when you heat it up, this will cut loose. Anyway, so let's take off this fake matchbook here. Now, look, these are super gross quality. I think gross meant something different back then. Maybe this should have been the matchbook of the episode. Oh, well, I don't have a time machine, so we're just stuck with it. Anyway, you see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15th fret is right behind where the neck drops into this. So if I were to take something and pull this out, this fret, and drill down into the fret line with a very small drill bit, a longer drill bit. Anyway, you would drill down into the fret line uh, or the fret slot where this is gone, this is gone. And then you take like one of those basketball inflator needles and you stick it down in there and you hook up something to steam this loose. Once it starts to work loose, you can do this and that hide glue will cut loose because of the heat of the steam. Anyway, we're not going to do that, but we're going to follow the same kind of principle. We're going to need to heat this up and then I'm going to want to take and bend this back, this neck back. Oh, you can see that's a lot better right there. You can see how wide that is and maybe if I lean this down. Oh yeah, you can watch it move. You see it moving there? So what I want to do is I want to loosen this up a little bit. I'm going to take this fine tip applicator here. It's got a needle on the end of it to keep my, my tip clean. Anyway, you can take this needle and it goes right in there like so. So we're going to heat this up and then we're going to pull this back now. How am I going to do that? Well, let me All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is take a piece of this sash cord like this, and I'm going to feed it through these holes, the top tuner holes right here. And then I'm going to tie a knot in it. Okay, so I tied that knot there. I got a lot of extra slack there. Why do I got so much? Because I wanted to make it look like Elvis's jumpsuit. That's why. Anyway, leave that like that. And now we're going to turn the guitar over. Okay, so pay attention. So I take this rag, remember on your parts list, there's a brace running right behind here, right across here. I just want to know where that is. I can take a mirror and look in there. And uh, Anyway, I'm going to put that rag there. Now I want you to notice back here where the pointer is. I have taken some tape and put it there. Now the bridge is going to be right here and I've taken off the tail piece and, uh, and the bridge. So I got this. Now I'm going to take this motorcycle strap I was telling you about. And it's got the, the smart end where you adjust it. And then it's got the dumb end where there is no adjustment. You want to hook the dumb end in 
right here like this. You see that? And then you see the way I laid it down the middle of the guitar in the back right here. That's where the reinforcement is in the back of the guitar where your strap button goes and all that and where the, the tailpiece uh, works in. Um, I did an episode called Tore Up Tailpiece. Watch that one up here to help you understand what happens when uh, these things start going bad like this one has a hundred times on this guitar. Okay, now look at here. I've turned this over. There's the gap. See it? I've turned this over. I've carefully positioned this motorcycle tie-down strap across the middle of the back of the guitar. And now I'm going to take the smart end. Remember the smart end? It's where the adjustment is. I don't want this all twisted up. And I'm going to move the camera up here where everything's falling off like that. And I'm going to hook this in here like that. And, and let's, oh, we've had a cotton failure. Here we go. Now, I'm going to take the smart end and I'm going to pull the slack out of this like so. See that? Okay, let's go down here where the interesting part is. Great camera work, dude. Yeah, thanks. Okay, now I'm going to take this piece of board I was telling you about. It's a neck cut off. I'm going to slip it here underneath the strap. I'm going to put it where the bracing is so I know where the braces are in here. I'm going to stand it on its end. That makes this act like a bridge. And I'm going to grab a hold of this strap here. And I may stand this up somewhere or something. But I'm going to pull this and put some tension on this neck. Look at how that's moving. See that? And I'm going to pull on this like I'm alive. And I'm going to stand it up. And once I start cinching this down, you're going to see that gap disappear because I'm bending the guitar back against itself. You know, I want you to watch right there where we put that gap in there like so, right? Look, it doesn't want to go in there so much. If I take like this headstock blank, do not covet my headstock blanks. I only got a hundred of them. You can cut a hundred more in an hour. Oh, did you see that episode called uh, Scarf Joint Jig? Oh, that's one of my best ones. You want to see that right up there. Anyway, notice what happens here. If I put this under this tight strap and work this in, it is going to shut that gap up. Now, we're going to go to the secret weapon, a cook stove. All right, guys, welcome to my laboratory, i.e. the kitchen. I'm going to run through the list of ingredients we're going to need now. You are going to need boiling water. Check. It will not work unless you have Chick Flick Teal software cookware. Check. Next, we borrowed this Folgers coffee can from our friend, Mrs. Olson. Remember the episode about Mrs. Olson? There's a link to it right up there, right about now. Thanks, Mrs. Olson, for the use of this can. We are going to need a piece of tin foil that will fit over the can because we are going to pitch a tent. We are going to need our hide glue in our fine line standard tip applicator. First thing we're going to do is all the scrap apparatus that we rigged up on the hobo guitar. Remember all this? Now we're going to take all that off now. We're also going to take up the off the matchbook mock-ups. How you doing Jack? My friend Jack Merluzzo. We're going to take off all the mock-up here. Can you fix me? I don't think so. Take all that off. I'm sure you wanted to see every part of this. And we're going to take all that off because there's a fire right there and we might start on fire. We don't want that. So, we're going to strip this down. Not like that, just regular. Now, with some careful engineering, i.e. a watermelon, we are going to put the guitar like so, where the neck joint where it meets the body sits over the Folgers can. Notice the perpendicularity here. Do you see that? Good. We're going to turn off the flame. We're going to put the boiling water in 
the Folgers can, like so. We try not to spill it all over. But we want that boiling water to be just like that. Then, and only then, we're going to set the neck joint right above the boiling water. Now we're going to take our tent and we're going to put it over there so all the steam rises up to the neck. By capillary uh, transpiration something or other, you can see that the steam is rising. I did not put any Vicks in the water because the guitar did not seem to exhibit any nasal conge congestion. Run to the lips. Nasal congestion symptomology. All right, not to leave you hanging. In the event that your guitar did exhibit signs of nasal congestion, you would want to use Vicks Vatrol. No. Vicks Vatronol. Do you see that? Ooh, look at this. Do not covet my lit magnifying glass. Look at that. Ooh. Anyway, Vicks Vatronol. All right, guys. You're going to be on your own for about 15 minutes while that neck is under steam. Do something productive. Maybe call your friends. Oh, I see you. <laughs> Do not covet my chick flick T.O. phone. I know what you're doing out there. Anyway, call your friends up. Maybe invite them over for a party or something. Anyway, find something to do because you're on your own for about 15 minutes. I got some phone calls to make. Hey, dude, listen, if you're going to hear me and we're going to talk, you need to pull that string tight, dude. Pull it. Pull it like you're alive. Hello. Hello? <coughs> All right. It, there's the timer. <coughs> it's been 15 minutes. Well, actually, it's been 14 minutes and 57 seconds. But notice the condensation on the neck up here. Notice that. Huh! Not really. It is warm. And the, the hide glue that they used on this guitar in 19-whatever is now soft in there. We're going to rush out to the shed and we're going to flip this guitar over. We are going to put, using our fine line standard tip applicator, some glue in that gap right there. And we're going to hook up our scrap apparatus again and bend this neck backwards. And then we're going to leave it alone for a while and let it set up at least one day. All right, I really had to hurry here. I can still feel that this is warm. That's what I wanted. I rigged everything back up. And you can see that that gap is still there. Wasn't as bad as when it started. So having it under tension for a couple days helped. Now... You want to remember that hide glue sets up very slowly and is activated and deactivated by heat. So, if you're storing your guitar at Stovepipe Wells Village, remember that episode in Death Valley, expect that your neck's going to come loose and, and whatever. So, always watch these things in heat and do not let them dry out. Now, I want to show you that this... Fine tip applicator. Remember, it's got a needle, so you can put it back in here and clear out the glue out of your tip. If you don't have that, you're going to be clogging them up. Oh, and by the way, these tips are replaceable. In the event you do have a problem, you can just push that out and replace this tip and put it back on the bottle. Anyway, before I start squirting this down into that gap, I want to show you this puts glue out in very small amounts. You see that? Like so. So, we're going to take our applicator and we're just going to squirt glue down in there and let it run through capillary action. I mean, I am so full of science today that Bill Nye, the science guy, is coveting my show. That's right, so we're going to put it there like that. And we're just going to take it in there. We're just squirt it in there until it quits taking. Like I said, there's some capillary action going on here. Kind of like when you use acetate to bind plastic. 
binding, activate plastic binding to an old arch top. We're going to be talking about that a little bit. Anyway, now what we're going to do is we're just going to cinch on this thing like we're alive. We'll pull on it, get that strap set like so. I'm going to put my piece of wood like here. Remember that. And I'm going to use this scarf joint that you all are coveting and put that under there. And then we're going to get this stood up and we're going to cinch it down. You want to remember, I know where my braces are. I'm pulling up here, holding the wood. I'm using this. You can't see it up there. Remember that? That endless loop I got up here. I'm pulling down on this and then pulling the strap. If you try to just pull the strap, nothing's going to happen. But if you pull down on that endless loop that you made and then tug on the strap, check that out. There is no more gap right there. And there's a bunch of glue that is squeezed out. I'm going to take my damp cloth, which I do not have. So I got to play the Grandma Fix Your Hair in Church spit game. There we go. And I'm going to wipe that off just a little bit because hide glue is water cleanup. There you go. Now, I'm going to come back and I'm going to cinch this up a couple more times. And then we're going to do nothing but leave it sit. Before we put this away to dry in the house, which is the environment we want, remember no hot and cold. I wanted to show you close up here. Remember there was a gap right there when we started here? You remember how we measured it? Yeah, well guess what? It ain't going in there, so hey, no log in tonight, baby. All right, under the watchful eye of Mrs. Olson, we're gonna let this wonderful rigging do its job and take care of that little problem we had right there. I'll see in a little bit. Well, in a lot bit because it's going to be at least 24 hours, right? And I'm actually going to move this in the house and do everything I told you to do correctly. And then, and then it'll be back here. But you might think that it was here the whole time, which it wasn't. You just have to take my word for it. And, and uh, while you're waiting for glue to dry, why don't you give me a thumbs up, a like, right down in that area down there, right over there, right? Alrighty then. All right, guys. We glued this up. It came out perfect. And you're saying, hey, wait a minute. You clickbaited us into thinking that this was going to be a repair that involves some kind of a $3 expenditure. And I haven't seen you do that yet. Well, hey, guess what? I'm not a liar. What do you think these were all about? Remember me telling you about the best luthier supply in the world? Ace True Value Hardware Store. Well, yeah. Now we're going to put the last step of this, the most important step. And that's these inside corner braces. That's right. I've taken them to a belt sander and ground them around. And now we're going to put that right there. Let me get that on there and I'll explain why. This is known as the AKA Troy Murrah or restaurant or snake arm neck reset. See? Look at that. Get them pointed the right way so I don't lose sleep and have to see a therapist over how they're lined up. And um, look at that. You can't hardly tell that there was ever anything wrong. Perfect. All right, pretty good, huh? Not. Hey, you know what? This episode was kind of tongue-in-cheek to teach you a lesson that I already learned. If you are going to try to fix a neck detach from arch top, you are getting into a big deal. So at the end, you might as well glue it and run a couple of shelf brackets into it and call it a day because going through and drilling it out and doing all that kind of thing. So here's the moral of the story. I'm not telling you what to think, but people say I'm pretty good at that, so let's give it a whirl. If you're sitting there looking at a $200 arch top that was made by K, they got all kinds of names, and you see that gap there, 
you are fixing to get in to a couple hundred bucks to fix it. And then when it's all done, if you've rigged it up like this, it's not going to be worth anything. So you're going to spend two, two hundred fifty, three hundred $300 to have a luthier reset the neck. You're going to have 500 bucks into a guitar that's worth three at the most. And I can show you that quality instrument all day long. And we're going to do that when I do the episode called Dummies Guide to Junk Arch Tops. So, I built this guitar on a whim. Uh, we're going to do some stupid stuff to it at the end of the day. It's just going to have a screaming pickup and uh, piezo on it. And it'll end up on some trash blues stage. And if you think you're going to make a lot of money selling these to trash Delta Blues players, well, hey, guess what? They haven't worked at all in six months. And before that, we weren't free with our money to those guys. You know what the thinnest book in the world is? Rich, trash, Delta Blues guitarist. Yeah, that's it. So, hey, don't forget, Reverend Payton's big damn band. I gave you a link below, probably up there on the iCards, to a song called Front Porch Train that goes right with this guitar. We're going to go do some stupid stuff with this, and we're not anywhere near done being ignorant and spending money on something I literally paid one penny for. And uh, I'll catch up with you then. Thanks for watching. See you next time.